Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a vegan and living in London, originally from the US and Japan. And today I am bringing to you a brand new video, duh, where I will be trying UK based chains that I've never tried before. So there are a handful of chains in the UK. I've lived here for about a year now, um, but I have not tried some of the British chains that exist here in London. So I thought it would be fun to kind of like try them, let you know what I think, um, how they compare to other restaurants, chain restaurants that I've tried. I'm not gonna try them all at once in one clip or in one setting. I'm gonna like kind of sparse them out over time. But today I'm trying two places, Tortilla, which is where this is from, and Cafe Nero. Cafe Nero is an Italian influenced coffee house headquartered in London and it was started in 1997 by Gary Ford and it currently has over 1,000 coffee houses throughout Europe as well as the States apparently they have some stores. So Cafe Nero doesn't have the most vegan options but I was able to find two things. So this is the vegan festive feast panini which has turkey, quote unquote turkey, with a festive stuffing, cranberry, port sauce, and spinach. No idea what port sauce is. I suppose it's like a, I don't know, like a gravy maybe? I'm not sure. And then they also have a classic mince pie. This is vegan. Um, I had a mince pie for the first time the other day and was not impressed. So, I don't know, maybe this one's better. I'm gonna try the sandwich first. It looks okay, the fillings, I mean, do they use, maybe they use, um, this isn't chicken, chicken. I think they do. Yeah, it tastes a lot like the this isn't chicken product, which I love, so. Oh, that's decent. I really like the bread. I like cranberry sauce. I know some people don't like cranberry sauce, on like sandwiches but I like it like I said the fake chicken which they call turkey is really good as well I think the bread really makes this dish like if this bread was bad or like not as fluffy and nice I don't think the sandwich would be as good because the fillings are just like they're fine but they're nothing like mind-blowing I'll give the sandwich and eight. Now let's move on to the mince pie. It's really cute, I'll give them that. It has definitely a cute look. Let's see how she tastes. This mince pie is not bad. The only mince pie I've had is the Weight Rose vegan mince pie. And it wasn't as, like I feel like this one is slightly sweeter. It has more, like the pastry is better. I don't know. Like, the flavors are just better. For those watching that don't know what mince pie is, actually, I don't really know what mince pie is, but from taste, I gather that it's kind of like a jammy, dried fruit concoction that is in a pastry. So it's kind of like a pie, but it's not, like, whenever I heard of mince pie last year, I thought it was like a mince meat pie, but it has nothing to do with meat. It's a sweet, Pie. And it has kind of, yeah, like a marmalade flavor with like a little bit of texture. Like I think there's dried fruit inside. Let me, let me look up what a mince pie is before I go any further. It's filled with a mixture of dried fruit and spices. Cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon. That's that. I would give this an eight as well, actually. So, so far, Cafe Nero doing well. Okay, let's move on to tortilla, which is basically London's version of Chipotle. I mean, it has the exact same setup. You go in, you choose what you want, like burrito or burrito bowl, which they call a naked burrito. You can also get tacos, um, and then you pick your fillings just like in Chipotle, and they have very, very, very similar fillings to Chipotle. The protein is a little bit different. In Chipotle, they have sofritas, which is like the tofu vegan option. And here they have a chili no carne, which is their vegan protein option. Um, but otherwise, I got fajita veggies, black beans, guacamole, salsa, coriander, rice, and a lime. A squeeze of, I got a lime 
wedge, which is, uh, oh, oh no, of course, of course, oh my god, of course I make a mess. There were actually some slightly different fillings, like you could also get jalapenos and you could also choose the size, so you could get medium or large bowl, which I guess is slightly different. And they have tomato rice, along with coriander rice, so. Little, little slight differences, but pretty much in terms of experience, it's the same. Let's see if the taste compares, okay? Let's go. It looks delicious, though. I like the chili. Chili no carne. This company, also based in London, but its founders, I believe, are American. At least one of them. Brandon and Jennifer Stevens are the founders, and I'm pretty sure Brandon is American or US born. Yeah, at one point it was the fastest growing fast casual Mexican brand in the UK. Nowadays, there's actually a lot of fast casual Mexican chains in the UK, but I'm not sure if any of them are good, to be honest. I'm liking the amount of veggies in this. I will say I prefer the chipotle rice. This rice is a bit dry. I mean, you can't really tell because it's like mixed in with everything. And I think it's slightly cheaper than chipotle. I don't know, this was seven pounds. For a burrito bowl, it's around 10 pounds. So this is almost three pounds cheaper. So that's, you know, that's definitely a USP for them. I'll give um, tortilla maybe a seven out of 10. It's nothing to write home about, but in terms of like price and the amount of food you get and the taste, it's pretty good. And I can't stop eating it, so. So that concludes part one of me trying UK fast food, or UK chains that I've never tried before. I'll catch you in a few days for the next couple of restaurants. Hello, so I am back uh, with a another UK chain, and today I'll be trying Coco di Mama, Italian food to go, or no, Italian to go. Um, so I bought two different pastas plus a dessert. This one is the Midi Vegan Lentil Ragu which uh, I got with whole wheat pasta and olives. And this one over here is the Midi Super Green Pesto. Regular, I got this with regular pasta with chili flakes and basil. And then for dessert, I got a mince pie. Uh, and to give you a little overview of the history of Coco di Mama, um, they opened their first doors in London in 2011. Um, and its sole mission has become the nation's most loved Italian to go. And actually they have 145 locations. So it's across the UK, not just London. They have quite a few vegan options. I got it from Uber Eats, but I think if you get it in store, they have a few more options. Like I think they have a sandwich that's vegan and a lasagna that's vegan. So if you want the full range, I would recommend going in store rather than delivering. One other thing I wanted to mention before I try it is that my Uber Eats driver, you can like see how many trips they've done after they deliver it to you. And my Uber driver has has done more than 8,000 trips. It's crazy. 8,000 trips and I'm pretty sure he does just eat and probably deliver too because when he gave me the food, he had like a just eat, just eat backpack. So I can't even imagine how many trips he's done if you combine the other delivery platforms. But anyway, okay, enough talking. Let's eat. I will try the lentil ragu first. On first look, it just, it kind of just looks like tomato sauce, but I see a bit of lentils, so let's try. That's good, I'm trying olive. The pasta is pretty good. I mean, it's cooked well. I like the sauce. I want to try to get a bit more of the sauce. It is a bit plain. Like there's no, there's not a lot of like veg or, I think they could have added a bit more cause it's a little bit dry and a little bit, I don't know. Definitely needs a bit more spice, but I think the olives help. So the nice thing about Coco de Mama is that you can add up to three toppings. 
And the toppings are pretty decent. Like you can add olives like I did or basil, chili flakes, rocket, truffle oil, chili oil, peppers, cheese, blah, blah, blah. So like you can add up to three toppings, which I think is a pretty nice perk. Um, so yeah, I would recommend adding stuff to this one because it's a bit, it needs a bit more flavor, I would say. Let's move on to pesto. This one I'm quite excited about, especially because it's nut free. Usually when there's pesto or even vegan pesto, I can't have it because it has nuts, cashews or pine nuts usually, but this one has no nuts, so bon appetit. Mmm, I like it. Similar to the ragu one, I feel like this could use a bit more texture or veggies. Their pesto is not made from the normal ingredients, it's made with broccoli, kale, and broad beans. So it tastes a little bit different from, I guess, your typical pesto, but it tastes amazing, I think. The ragu is made with green lentils mixed with vegetables in a rich sun-dried tomato sauce. I wouldn't say rich exactly, but between the two, I would probably go for the pesto, especially if you are a nut allergy sufferer like me and you want a nut-free pesto, look no further. To end our meal, we will be trying the mince pie. This is called the Nice Guys Mince Pie. Don't know if that's a brand. This one looks a little different from the ones I've had because it has like a bit of a crumble on top. Um, but yeah, I figured, you know, it's vegan, it's Christmas time, so I'm just gonna go for the mince pie. And it was the only vegan dessert on the menu, so easy choice. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so hard to eat. <laughs> oh, that might be my new favorite. The crumble gives it a bit of an apple crumble feel, but the filling is like the classic mince pie filling. It's pretty good. Overall, I'm glad I tried Coco de Mama. Great lunch option, great like to-go option, and I'm happy with the mince pie. So overall, I'll give Coco de Mama maybe a 7 out of 10. And it was pretty cheap, like each of these pots were around 5 pounds. So actually, it could have worked for my meals under six pounds video. So the pesto was five pounds 50, and the ragu was six pounds 30, and the mince pie was two pounds 10. So really not too bad. Hello, uh, we are back today. I am trying Prezzo. It is another kind of Italian place actually. Um, and to give you guys a little overview of what Prezzo is all about, their story began in 2000 when they first opened their restaurant in New Oxford Street, London. Back then, they were called Jonathan's. It's funny because Jonathan's is like a pretty popular chain family restaurant in Japan. Um, it's like a kind of Western style chain restaurant in Japan. But anyway, since then, we've become one of the most well known and most loved Italian dining restaurants on the high street. Today, we have more than 180 restaurants with a team of 3,300 3, people. It's actually a pretty big chain. I only just became familiar with it because I saw a Prezzo restaurant um, in the area that I live in and I was like, oh, that place looks pretty good. So I thought I would try it today. So I got two pizzas. One is pepperoni and the other is some sort of like chicken thing, vegan chicken thing. Um, so the pepperoni pizza was $11.95 and it looks like a proper pepperoni pizza. There's a lot of pepperoni on it. it. Smells good. It's not warm anymore because I ordered it a while ago. Or actually it took a while to come. But I'm excited. I'm very hungry. It's good. I mean, it's cold, but it's good. I don't know what kind of cheese they use or what the pepperoni brand is, but I feel like the cheese is either cheese or Violife. I don't know which. There's nothing really bad or good to say. Like, it's like your standard what you would expect. Run of the mill 
pepperoni pizza. They don't overdo it with the cheese. That's like a pet peeve of mine when restaurants kind of like put too much vegan cheese on because when there's too much, it can be like kind of gross, but they did a good job. The crust is good. Let me try the actual end. It's not like super fluffy, but it's like, it's good. It kind of reminds me of like, um, I don't know, like a Pizza Hut, but a little less stodgy. See, I'm living in London. I'm picking up words like stodgy. Stodgy for the uninitiated means like super heavy or carby, I think. Let me just double check. I always second guess myself when I try to explain words. Let me think stodgy. Yeah, heavy filling, high in carbs. So I was right, um, but yeah, it's not too stodgy. It's kind of like on the thin crust side, you know? Okay, let's try number two. This is the chicken, vegan chicken and roasted peppers. Yes. It also looks delightful. And this company also uses the this, this isn't chicken chicken. I feel like this isn't is like becoming super popular for restaurants and like cafes. They're using a lot of their products, I feel, nowadays, which is understandable because this isn't chicken or like this isn't products are up there. They're amazing. So if I was a restaurant owner, I would probably do the same. Mm. Also cold, but still good. The peppers have like a nice sweet flavor to them. They're very well roasted, I would say. It's 100% this isn't chicken. And the chicken one was 12 pounds 95. So it's about a dollar more, or sorry, 12, a, a pound more than the pepperoni, but not bad. Overall, I mean, this exceeded my expectations. I honestly didn't think I didn't expect much from Prezzo because it's not like a vegan, they don't really focus on the vegan menu, I don't think, as much. Um, they only had a few, they had like three vegan pizzas, they had like no vegan appetizers really except for like fries, no vegan salads, no vegan dessert. There was one other vegan pizza, I think there was like a margarita, maybe there was two others. There was a vegan margarita and like another one that combined the chicken and the pepperoni. So. I mean, I shouldn't complain, you know? In Japan, I had nothing, so I'm still spoiled here. I would give Prezzo a seven and a half. Not too expensive and well done. So we went to Patty and Bun, which is a chain burger restaurant in London and Brighton. And they had three different plant-based burgers and some sides that were vegan. So I got the Ari Gold cheeseburger with vegan chicken nuggets and just regular fries. The fries were really good and well cooked and seasoned, but they were almost four pounds, which is a bit overpriced in my opinion. The chicken nuggets were really good. They use this isn't chicken again. This is like the third place I think in this video that uses this isn't chicken, but these were also a bit overpriced at five pounds. The burger comes with a meatless forms patty, vegan cheddar, lettuce, tomato, pickled onions, ketchup, and smoky mayo. Uh, this was really, really good as well, although I tend to prefer restaurants that make their own patty rather than just buy patty from a brand, because um, I feel like it's it makes it less special, but the sauce and everything put together was really nice. And overall, I would give patty and bun maybe six and a half just considering the cost the taste was good but the cost and the fact that all of their vegan dishes are not house-made products they're using uh, external products you know knocks down the points a little bit for me okay so that's it for this video on uh, me trying british chains that i've never tried before 
Out of all of the places I tried, I think Prezzo scored the highest with a 7.5. Yeah, Prezzo was pretty damn good. Um, but none of the places I tried were horrible or, you know, bad in any way. I thought they all had their own kind of charm and good parts to it. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments and give it a like if you like it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.